Hello, hello everybody, welcome back, Omega Given here. Well, today we're gonna be going over a really cool commander deck that has basically every infinite combo you can think of with a splash of other fun infinite combos. Um, but before I get to that, I wanna shout out the sponsor, which is myself. If you guys wanna go and buy yourself one of these Magic the Gathering deck boxes for a commander sized deck, you can go and check out my Etsy page. If you do not see what you want on the Etsy page, message me and we'll see these things come with three different dials one two three for colors of your choice of course your commander up front and of course we're gonna have a new line coming out soon um, which has very very custom paneling on the sides so stay tuned for that but let's get to our game um our, our deck here so this is a basically a five color deck um because I want to try to encapsulate like all the different kinds of infinite combos you can do. Um, I kind of chose to use um, uh, Kenrith the Returned King. Um, he's a fairly popular one um, because mainly he's a five color and you can just do a lot of fun stuff with him for just like cost of different things. Um, but let's see here. Um, it, so him just by himself, he just one red, you know, everybody gets haste and trample, which could help. The haste will help with a lot of different combos. And then two for plus one counter on some creature which will be good for other combos, or three for gain life, um, which is also good for combos, um, four for drawing a card, and I, there's a few combos in here that have like draw card kind of like combos, but those will be kind of like, that's not as much of combos. And five, put target creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under its own control. That'll be good to help pull something back out of your graveyard that might've been killed to be able to activate a combo, <laughs> like an infinite combo, like craziness. All right, I've organized my infinite or my combos into a whole bunch of different uh, stuff, but we'll go top to bottom um for one i have a protection a whole bunch of protection stuff you know they're just basic protection index uh deck to help protect your stuff by like basically making it so they people can't play spells on your turn these might get targeted as soon as possible but it'll at least stave off them from destroying your infinite combo stuff but right here at the top we have infinite beasts on the right so this infinite beasts over here this guy um they are a pretty cool guy it's basically you have ivan lane denzin or Denizen on your battlefield and his ability is whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under your control put a plus one counter on target creature which this will be helpful for other green creatures in your deck but if paired with herd Baloth, which is a five cost card it enters whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on herd Baloth, you may create a four four beast token so he enters the battlefield with when ivan is already on the battlefield which ivan then puts a plus one counter on herd Baloth. And then four, 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 all keeps entering the battlefield, and you just keep putting plus ones on Herd Baloth. Um, basically, just yeah, you just keep infinite, infinite four fours of beasts. So for what five cost? So and then four cost before that. So if you can play Ivan, hopefully he doesn't die until your next go around. Herd, and then you're set. So you gotta have five mana, and you got infinite four fours. Pretty awesome, unless somebody board wipes you. Of course, that's like this is the same thing for everybody. Um, we have a couple helpful artifacts here. Um, basically, this guy makes it so anything can tap for or you be used. All of these abilities can be used with different mana. That'll be very helpful for a five color deck because five colors is really hard to deal with. Um, also, you can put some plus ones on guys, so that might be uh, pretty good. And a new Coca-Cola machine. I kind of put this in here for the food token specifically, um, but it can all, like this is gonna be for later on when this set comes out. Um, but yeah, basically some food tokens for another build I have later on. We'll worry about that in a second. All right, infinite copy. Um, this could actually be paired with a couple other cards in my deck, but we'll just go over this infinite copy right now. It's key. Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker. Um, so it's a, you know, fairly expensive guy. Five, it's haste. It taps and creates a token that's a copy of target non-legendary creature you control. So it's copy another creature you control and it has haste. That creature has haste. And I can sacrifice it at your end step. But what if we pair it with Combat Celebrant, which is a four one. So if Combat Celebrant, which would be the, co the target of Kiki. So you tap Kiki, create another Combat Celebrant. Um, basically, um, if he hasn't been exerted, you may exert it as it attacks. When you do untap all other creatures you control, and after this phase, there's an additional combat phase. So basically, you have Kiki and Jiki on, the, on your battlefield, and you have Combat Celebrant on your battlefield. You go to combat, you tap Kiki, copy Combat Celebrant, uh, or no, you attack with combat, or actually you do co copy combat celebrant. You attack with combat celebrant, and what it does is untap Sakiki, and you have another attack phase after this with an extra combat celebrant that has haste. 
this time around. So maybe if they block the, this 4-1, well, what if you just uh, go to your next combat phase and you have another 4-1? Attack with that 4-1, another phase, another 4-1, attack with that 4-1. You basically have infinite attacks. So if you're on a table of four people, maybe you can use this to literally destroy somebody that has like no protection against at least a 4-1. Or it maybe it somehow resolves and like, this because somebody that can block it until you just choose to stop attacking basically. Um, and you just have a bunch of 4-1s if they don't die. It's a little bit weird, but Kiki can also, Kiki, Jiki can also be a mob paired with a few other guys to make it pretty cool. Now this deck also has a bunch of ramp in it if you wanted to go and check out my uh, Archidect page to see what kind of ramp I have. Just makes it so abilities cost less to help maybe some other spells cost less. Um, you know, basic stuff like per like just tap mana dorks, some of the command spheres, make it so all lands can tap for other mana, stuff like that. It just helps a lot with having those kind of things. Um, Faye Burrow Elder, I think, can actually be paired with something. I can't remember what, but it's not in a, in a section there. But basically, you know, a bunch of other mana stuff. Seaborn Muse, solid card for just like, you know, trying to get yourself untapped on other people's phases. All right. Next we have over here on the left, we have Infinite Blinking. Blinking is really hard to uh, understand, so this one might need a whole video on itself. Basically, you're just blinking Abadel back in, and when you blink Abadel in, he, uh, what, what he does is he pulls out all of your, um, I guess, uh, if you have any of like, not mana dorks, if you have mana dorks have haste, that's perfect. Actually, your commander uh, can give them haste for one red. Um, actually, is it, is it creatures? Is it creatures only? All creatures. Never mind. It can't give. Uh, it can, okay, yes, no. It, it creatures. Yeah, it gives all your mana dorks. Hey, so you can tap all your mana dorks for mana. So basically, like you know, all your mana dorks are exiled. You then blink Abadel, um, which when he goes out, you tap all of them for mana. Abadel comes in. You can do that if you just like with like an Eldrazi Displacer because you cost three. So as long as you're blinking with like like some hasted guys that have more than three mana, um, like tap worthy. You can have infinite mana and infinite soldiers from Abadel whenever he basically creates a one-one soldier for everybody that is blinked or like that, like, you know, is exiled and comes back in. And of course you have some fel other blinking guys like Feldar Guardian here to help you with that. Um, you have this guy, I think this is to help untap certain things for other stuff. I don't, I can't remember exactly how Pester Might works. And I just threw White Plume Adventure in here because I just love the initiative, even though, yes, lots of people hate the initiative. I love it. Um, just so you can blink him in and out and just get the initiative and you win that way. Because the initiative, if you blink through it, you technically can uh, kill somebody that way with the initiative or just draw your entire deck and play your entire deck. That's another thing you can do. All right, um, let's keep going over here. So these are, uh, we have the Infinite Draw. So Infinite Draw here, we have... Archangel of Tharun. When so you have this on the battlefield. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, which is awesome. Everyone gets to get buffed up whenever you gain life. All right. So, but then you have Fathom Mage. Whenever a plus one plus one counter is put on Fathom Mage, you can draw a card. So if those two paired up, you can infinite draw whenever there's plus ones putting on. How do you get the plus ones though? You have Horizon Chimera. Whenever you draw a card, you gain one life. So you just need one like click of a like I don't know stuff maybe like a beginning step like whenever you draw a card so like your upkeep and you get your draw step you draw a card you gain one life that activates him which puts a plus one counter on Fathom Mage which puts um, a plus one or which makes you draw a card which go, goes into Archimate Throne and so on and so forth I guess that technically does draw you out though so be careful with that <laughs> Yeah, be careful with infinite draws because that can actually make you lose the game. All right, we got some recursion here. I can't remember if I put this with anything in particular, but yeah, I got some recursion to help pull, pull cards back out that might have died. All right, infinite mill. If you want to infinite mill somebody, you have mind crank and dusk metal guild mage, which this will cost you seven unless you have like some of these ramp cards I have earlier, which makes it cost less, which is kind of nice. Um, but yeah, you basically cost seven. You activate both of his abilities. Whenever a card is put into a opponent's graveyard from anywhere this turn, that person lose, that player loses one life, and then target player puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So basically, you have it so whenever they put a card in their graveyard, they lose a life. Then you make them do that twice. You, but the thing is that activates mind crank, which is whenever they lose life, they mill that many cards. So you start that, they mill two, oh, they lose two, they, they lose life, they mill two, just so on and so forth. You mill all your opponents. All right, next we have, I don't know, I just kind of put this in here for fun. It's an inf infinite enter the battlefield barbarian, 
which paired with like a bombardment, which is in this deck, it's part of my finisher group, which we'll get to. Um, it will kill somebody because you just get one, one, one damage each every single time you do this. But yeah, enduring and in, in renewal, enduring renewal. So you play with your hands face up. So this is really good for if you want to display everybody all your infinite combos that you're about to slaughter them with. Um, if you draw a card, a creature card from the library, you discard it. Who know, who cares about that? But whenever a creature goes to your graveyard from play, put that creature into your hand. So, what you do is Reckless Barbarian, cost two, gain two, so you just, you know, Reckless Barbarian sacrifice two mana floating, goes to the graveyard, goes back to your hand with Enduring Renewal, put back down for that two mana, and then we sacrifice, and it just rotates around, and you get infinite, like, one creature entering the battlefield, which can, you know, activate some other guys I have around here. Uh, and we'll just not worry about that for now, though. But that's just, it's just a fun thing, because, like, uh, we're in the finisher chunk. Where's my finishers? Uh, that is where it gets real crazy. Finishers. I don't know where finishers are. We'll get to the infinite finishers in a bit. All right, let's go over to infinite ping. This is a fun one. So Niv Mizzet, the fire mind and curiosity when you you got a pair of curiosity. So it's an enchantment aura. So you enchant. Curi or, uh, Niv Mizzet, <laughs> which is a high cost card. So this is just kind of a fun late game thing if you can get uh, Niv Mizzet out. So it's a flying, whenever you draw a card, which, you know, infinite draws, infinite poof, 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 kills all your opponents from like the infinite draw guy. Um, it deals one damage to any target and you tap to draw a card. But with curiosity, whenever enchanted creature deals combat damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. So basically you just have to get both of these paired up you tap to draw a card, deals one damage. Oh, it dealt one damage, draw a card. Oh, draw a card, dealt one damage. All right, boom, and you infinitely attack people. Um, so that's how you do that infinite ping, uh, which is pretty awesome. You just got to make sure you don't uh, draw out and lose the game. <laughs> so I guess you have what? I guess four, like technically if you're trying to do it for three people, like are they still in the battlefield? You need to make sure you don't activate that more than uh, I guess 80 times, which is Actually, you probably only can do that 50 times before you lose the game. <laughs> so be careful there. All right, then we have some basic removal just to help you out here. This is a very expensive deck in the first place, so I just threw some fun, like, $60 <laughs> removals. So have fun with those removals. All right, infinite life. We have Archangel Tharun again. Um, so this is a fun little thing with Spike Feeder. So Archangel, whenever you gain life, put a plus one counter on target creature you control. And then you put it on this guy. Um, but this guy has a remove plus one counter, you gain two life. So you just uh, gain life infinitely and remove these plus one counters infinitely. So that's pretty awesome. Just infinite life. Boom. There you go. Infinite rats. Now I featured this in another video, but we can go over this really quickly again. I actually had the one, what is it? I had a uh, nuke, nuke cola machine up here just so we can get more food tokens. I probably should actually pair this with uh, the, the, where is it? the infinite rats here so basically you need three food tokens once you get three food tokens it you basically sacrifice those food tokens to get a draw which is awesome but that's not the infinite rats what you need to do to get the infinite rats is experimental confectioner basically whenever you whenever uh you sacrifice a food you create a rat so how does that work well guess what you create three rats from sacrificing three food tokens and you draw a card. But Peregrine Chook is whenever there's one or more tokens that would be created under your control, those tokens plus a food token is created. So three rats are created and three food tokens are created to repeat the process. Infinite rats. <laughs> and it's actually a very good pairing because we create a bunch of tokens in it with the other uh, infinite combos. So you get a lot of stuff, especially like this infinite squirrels. So you can get infinite food tokens this way. So for infinite squirrels, basically you are going to enchantment, tap an untapped creature you control, untap target basic land and then you're gonna have squirrel nest you're gonna enchant one of your basic lands with squirrel nest so you enchant that land it's a basic land with squirrel nest you tap that land for a one one green squirrel token okay now tap an untapped creature which is your green squirrel token and then you untap basic land and what you do there you could tap your basic land for another squirrel so this will be infinite tapped squirrels so that's pretty cool, pretty fun, right? Um, so that's fun. But if you compare it with something else where you have infinite attack phases and they all untap and you give them haste, you can attack them with infinite 1-1 one -one squirrels. That's pretty fun, right? <laughs> all right, let's keep going. 
Um, like I said, oh yeah, here's a whole tutor stack. I have eight tutors in here just to help you get the cards you want. For example, Demonic Tutor, a very expensive card. Um, uh, Eldrami's Call, or Eldamiri's El El Call, sorry. You basically just search for the things you need, and or enchantments you need, or just anything that you need from your graveyard or library to get what you need to uh, just activate one of these infinite combos and win the game. All right, lands. Yes, I'm using all of the dual lands, which are very expensive. So yeah, the cost of this deck. This is definitely a, a test deck. It's not really a deck that you're gonna go out and buy. If you buy this deck, you're, you're crazy. You're crazy. You're so whale. <laughs> I don't know. All right, infinite turns. This one I put in here just because we gotta have infinite turns. We don't have an infinite turn combo in this deck. So we have Thopter Assembly. You start with Thopter Assembly at the beginning of your upkeep. So make sure you cast them, whatever. Your next upkeep, it create or it returns into your hand and you create five 1-1 one, one Thopters. But what's crazy about that? Well, with Time Sleeve, you can tap, sacrifice those five uh, Thopters and take an additional turn. So if you're able to cast Thopter Assembly and Time Sleeve, then you basically have infinite turns. And those infinite turns will get you all the mana from your hand, all the draws you need to basically win the game. So you basically need six mana uh, available to win the game if you can get, get these two cards in your hand. That's pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, and of course they need to not counter you, which I guess, yeah, be careful. <laughs> all right, we have a few finisher cards. Um, I put Impact Tremors here because all those enter the battlefield effects will deal a ton of damage to people, especially Infinite Squirrels, all that. You'll just win the game. Um, we have Enter the Infinite, basically draws everything in your library just so you can win the game. Um, Omnipotent makes it so everything just be cast for zero, so. I guess you don't really even need that in this deck, to be honest. Just go and throw, like, replace that with a mana dork or some kind of draw card and yeah, to get, like, more stuff, like tutor cards. And yeah, it'll be good. Infinite mana. Let's go. We already covered almost a few things where you just get infinite creatures. But how do you get infinite mana? Well, we have Dead Eye Navigator and Peregrine Drake, those two combo. Um, this two combo, basically, you pair Dead Eye Navigator on the battlefield with Peregrine Drake. So Peregrine Drake will then or you activate Deadeye to, which is two, to blink Deadeye Dr or <laughs> Peregrine Drake, which untaps five of your lands. So cost two to get five mana and you just keep blinking him and you get infinite mana. So that's one way to do that. And then uh, we have a couple other ones here. Freed from the real, um, what is this? Oh yeah, Freed from the real paired with Selvala, Heart of the Wild. Basically, if you have a creature that is greater than three, I believe it is, or is it four? Something like that. You basically get infinite mana because you just pay one to untap Silvana, and then X, basically one tap, you get one more mana than what I guess Silvana was, which is two. So basically you get plus ones, but you infinitely, um, or oh, actually no, it's two. Yeah, 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 I guess you need at least a one plus one on the field. So it's like a three, three or more with that, with that combo, just so you can, be able to pay to untap her, pay one to tap her and get X mana, which is the power of the toughness of the greatest power, which you'll probably have a bunch of other guys that are way powerful than her. So you'll get infinite mana that way. Um, then I have Umbral Mantle. That's another way with Selvala to basically get infinite mana. And also she gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn. Every time you do this, so you need to have at least three like mana, but then again, she'll eventually get to the power where she taps for like, 20 or more 30 100 infinite and you get infinite mana and also she's like the biggest creature infinitely like infinite by infinite for power toughness so yeah that's pretty cool so yeah that is this awesome flipping um infinite deck i built here it only costs you five thousand dollars sorry it's a 20 minute video but if you want to go check this card out oh i actually i don't know why but it apparently has 103 cards Go and figure out which ones you want to take out. Maybe just take out one of these uh, infinite combos and you'll be set. Go and play this with your friends maybe and see how they do if they could withstand the infinite bliss of amazingness. But then again, thank you guys for watching and also go check out these Magic the Check boxes for yourself because they're pretty cool. I, I would love to for you guys to support our channel with that and I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.